You may or may not be surprised to learn that solar is actually by far the most abundant source of energy. The scale of available solar energy far exceeds the current and projected total world energy use. In 2004, the global consumption of energy was about 130,000 terawatt hours. A terawatt is equal to a trillion kilowatts or one with 15 zeros after it. Renewable sources of energy available each year far exceed this global demand. The direct solar radiation that hits the Earth is about 350 million terawatts. Simply put, the solar energy that falls on the Earth each minute is enough to supply the entire planet with all of its energy needs for an entire day. From this perspective, solar energy is clearly an important energy alternative. The challenge, of course, is the capture and transformation of solar energy into useful energy. This is a challenge of using solar energy because the sun's rays are spread over the half of the Earth that is facing the sun. In fact, some of it never makes it past the Earth's clouds and atmospheres to the surface, and at any given time, half of the Earth is not receiving any sunlight at all. This is another way of saying that solar is energy-rich but power-deficient. That means that while the sun is spewing an incredible amount of energy at us all of the time, it is relatively hard to turn that energy into power because it is very diffuse. Basically, you need to cast a very wide net in order to collect enough solar energy to apply it as power. Obviously, this is the benefit of fossil fuels, which is basically concentrated solar energy. On the other hand, our use of electricity is much more concentrated in location and spread over 24 hours. This picture of the Earth at night shows concentrated areas where electricity is used, and much of the Earth's surface where none is in use. The areas that use the most electricity at night also dominate the use of electricity in the daytime. The heaviest use of electricity is in the northern latitudes, which get less sunlight than areas closer to the equator. However, when electricity is generated from the heat of burning fossil fuels, the electricity is concentrated at the location where it is generated, and it is easily used there or added to the electric utility grid. This puts using solar energy at a disadvantage compared to its competition. But sunlight is widely available and free, and is playing an increasing role in electricity generation. Why are we so interested in converting sunlight into electricity? The reason is that electricity has proven itself over the past 200 years to be a very convenient and versatile way to use energy. We can use electricity to power technologies such as computers and telecommunications, which we know of no other way to power on the scale we use them. Electricity is also relatively easy to transport, at least when both generation and use are fairly concentrated. For these and other reasons, other forms of energy are often converted to electricity. For example, electric heaters use electricity that is often generated from heat, but the heat energy is converted to electricity for transportation and then back into heat at the point of use. The most common means of generating electricity starts with the combustion to release chemical energy in the fuel as heat. In most combustion-based electricity generation systems, the fuel is a fossil fuel such as coal, petroleum, natural gas, or a refined petroleum product such as gasoline, propane, or diesel fuel. Sunlight hits the earth and is converted by photosynthesis to chemical energy. The fuels are then burned, converting the energy to heat, which warms water to steam. The steam turns a turbine, which turns a generator, which converts mechanical energy into electricity. But of course, between step 2 and 3, millions of years need to pass by. Wind is another way of generating electricity that is growing rapidly at present. What happens here is that sunlight leads to heated air, but the heating is uneven due to terrain, water, vegetation, and other surface features. The unevenly heated air, combined with the Earth's rotation, lead to moving air or wind. The wind causes wind turbines to turn, which turns generators, which generate electricity. We've still started with sunlight, but we've taken a very different path to electricity. Solar thermal technology for generating electricity is also in use, and is being developed further. With this technology, sunlight is used to generate heat, which warms water to steam. The steam turns a turbine, which turns a generator, which converts mechanical energy into electricity. However, it is only really practical for electricity generation on a very large scale, and in places where there is a lot of sunlight. 
but places with a lot of sunlight are often remote and with limited water resources. By contrast, with photovoltaic technology, sunlight is converted directly into electricity. While at least one large solar thermal power plant is presently under construction in the U.S., photovoltaic generation capacity is growing much more rapidly. Let's look at the definition of a photovoltaic system. A photovoltaic system is a system that converts optical energy directly to electric energy. It does this by capturing electrons that are optically excited to higher energy states and using that energy to cause current to flow. The optoelectronic devices that capture the light and output electric power are called photovoltaic cells or solar cells. Photovoltaic cells are semiconductor devices, although they do not necessarily have to be. What are the advantages of photovoltaic systems? First of all, sunlight is free and readily available in some places and times. You don't have to pay for fuel for these systems. Photovoltaic or PV systems are simple, with no moving parts in the array itself, and only cooling fans and some of the power conditioning equipment. The array itself generates electricity silently. PV systems are practical on a smaller scale than most other electricity generation systems. Some systems are practical even though they only generate less than a watt of power. Also, since most PV systems are located close to where the electricity they generate is used, a smaller fraction of the power is lost to heat than when the electricity is transmitted a long distance from a power plant to where it is used. Lastly, and also very importantly, PV systems do not generate pollution as they generate electricity. Some pollution is generated when the system equipment is built and installed, and some pollution results when equipment needs to be disposed of, but this is small compared to fossil fuel or nuclear electricity generation. PV systems also have their disadvantages. First, solar cells are difficult and expensive to manufacture. Manufacturing these devices is not something you can do practically in your backyard or garage. Solar cells only convert a relatively small fraction of the energy in sunlight to electricity, which we describe as a low efficiency. While some laboratory specimens have converted about 40% of the light that hits them into electricity, all but the fanciest and most expensive solar cells convert less than 20% of the sunlight that hits them to electricity. PV systems are usually difficult to install properly. This is a main topic of this course. And of course, the weather isn't always sunny. Bad weather reduces the sunlight reaching a PV system, which reduces the amount of electricity the system can generate. However, much of the world's population lives in areas with moderate daytime sunlight. Areas with less sun tend to be cold and are often poor for agriculture. But the sunniest areas on Earth are deserts with sparse populations. What are people's motivations for installing PV systems? First, PV systems are often the most practical choice for off-grid electric power. The applications include monitoring and communications outposts on mountaintops, space satellites, and even scientific probes on Mars. While the most recent Mars rover does not use a PV system for power, previous ones do. Sometimes, PV-generated electricity can save an electricity user money over grid electricity. This is usually where grid electricity is unusually high or subsidy programs for PV systems are generous. Utilities in many states have government mandates to obtain a certain percent of the electricity they distribute from photovoltaic systems. The utilities then need to install their own systems or provide money so that others will. We'll discuss these arrangements later on. Some companies, especially large users of electricity, are concerned about future electric rate hikes. Companies that install PV systems have the security of knowing that some fraction of their electricity needs will not become more expensive in the future. And lastly, many people want to install PV systems to reduce the carbon dioxide emissions they are responsible for, and to show their concern for the environment. Businesses that show their environmental concern may also attract additional business this way. Political discussions of how and whether governments should support photovoltaic generation of electricity have been going on for a long time and will undoubtedly continue. We can't really convey a true understanding of the field without discussing some of the political aspects that are and have been involved. Rightly or not, solar energy has been viewed as liberal or associated with the political left. There are several reasons for this. 
First, the political leanings of many of the technology's early developers and customers were decidedly on the political left. Second, while there have been supporters of solar energy in many parts of the political spectrum, most political support for the PV industry has come from the center and left. Large electric utility corporations have often opposed requirements that they subsidize PV systems. Their opposition is viewed as coming from the conservative side of the political spectrum. This political breakdown is far from absolute, but there is also truth to it. In the federal government, differences in support go back over 30 years, when the Carter administration was supportive of solar energy, after which the Reagan administration was much less supportive. We do not endorse any political party or stance in these materials.